All right, today we're going to roll the lower back. Now, some people caution you not to roll the lower back, and I partly agree simply because um, if you have an instability in your lumbar spine, it can be an issue. Um, one thing we're going to do to protect against that is we're going to keep our abs engaged the whole time as I roll. I'm not going to allow myself to relax and bend over the uh, and arch over the foam roller on my lower back, on my lumbar spine. I'm going to keep engaged here. That does a couple of things. In addition to stabilizing my lumbar spine so that it won't get injured by the foam roller, it also relaxes the muscles that I'm rolling because of reciprocal inhibition. So as I'm engaging the muscles in front, the muscles, the antagonist muscles in the back have to relax. So I'm able to work into them a little bit deeper. Plus you get a good core workout while you're doing it, which is just an added plus, a little extra benefit. And I don't spend a whole lot of time here. Um, one other thing you want to be cautious of, and one reason we don't relax over the foam roller like this is the 12th rib on the bottom, the floating rib can and will break. Occasionally, I've known people who've broken their 12th rib on a foam roller, which is fascinating and embarrassing probably all at the same time, but it's definitely something we want to be cautious of. Um, and I'll usually work up to mid back or so and down to the sacrum. And then we'll transition on to the upper back. So.